and we are part reptilian. If you look at the size of a bee and look at the wings and how it flies, it's not supposed to be able to carry its weight. Bees are not from mm. here. The witch that Hitler was in contact with and how he was able to go back in time. And this book goes into that whole story of the crash of Nibiru, which happened 24 billion years ago. Greetings, family. So by popular demand, because from the series of videos we've done, people keep asking us about the books, the books, the books, the books. Yeah. So we're like, OK, we're going to have to pick a few books um, and go through them so that you lot know what books to get. So today we're going to review mm -hmm. Extra Terrestrial and Creation. All right. So the title of this scroll is called Extra Terrestrial and Creation. Now, this book came out in the 90s to give you an idea of how long Partner Babylon and Dr. Mm. Malachi Z was talking about this. Because what you have to realize is that everything on this planet has its origins from outside the planet. So extraterrestrials came here. Even the word planet, when you listen to the word planet, what you're hearing or maybe not seeing is plan ET. E the ET stands for extraterrestrial. So there are many books that the Master Prana Babjanun has put out regarding mm. extraterrestrials. This one especially talks about how creation on this planet began. It talks about the deals that were made with the governments. It covers what crystals are, what they were used for, um, deals with the deals that were made with the government. Um, there's so much. So, Va I mean, Valiant Thor. Yep, so the visit of Val Thor, or Valiant Thor, you can Google him, um, who came here. He's a Venerian. Yeah. And he came with a crew of people. This goes into all of that. Also dealing with like um, Bob Lazar, who uh, worked in Area 57, um, trying to back engineer um, extraterrestrial crafts and stop, also. Stop. What's Area 57? Oh. 51. Did I see? <laughs> That's where it's here 51. <laughs> <laughs> area 51. I'm like, I'm like, 57, I haven't heard of that one, so we're going to rewind that one. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Lazar also worked in um, Area 51, trying to um, back engineer extraterrestrial crafts, and also worked on the Element 115, which was. Um, the element that the extraterrestrials use to um, manoeuvre their crafts. That's right. So when we're talking about extraterrestrials, there are many, many types of extraterrestrials, from the shaggy beings from the Sirius star constellation, the Duanis, the Teros, the Danakil, the Greys, which most people are familiar mm. with, but they're different types of Grey, different species, um, the Romadians, the Maccabians, and many hybrids as well, because the draconian and the reptilians abduct these greys and create new hybrids. Mm. Remember that um, when the extraterrestrials were coming to this planet for the first time, they weren't sure whether they could live on the planet. Mm -hmm. Just like when we go out to, you know, to space, we have probes to go and check out the atmosphere to make sure that you, know, you can breathe etc etc so these greys were originally called ebes right mm. which is basically extra biological entities, entities and they were designed like robots to come and scout the planet and make sure that you know the the life forms that were coming here were able to um to breathe what people don't realize is that a lot of insects and plants and animals and certain things were brought to this planet because they were terraforming the planet right. after the crash of Nibiru. So people suffer from allergies, for example, and they can't get a cure for it. They don't know what's going on. A lot of that is because of some of these extraterrestrial, you know, um, plants and insects and things like that. You know, like bees, for example. Bees are not from mm. here. If you look at the size of a bee and look at the wings and how it flies, it's not supposed to be able to carry its weight. You know? So this is the scroll that goes into a lot of detail. Um, talks about the predator beans, where the, the movie was made. Um, anything Ralph, else you wanna? Was it yeah. Face on Mars as well? Yep, the Face on Mars. See, a lot of people talk about 
there were structures found on Mars. NASA sent satellites and they were pic taking pictures. Mm. There's a site called Sidonia, all right, where they saw structures and there's a face on Mars. Many people are now familiar with that. What a lot of people don't know is whose face is it? The face is of Alalu, yeah, who's a brother of Anu. Mm. And there's a whole story in here that tells you what happened. So we're not going to give you everything because you really do need to get the scroll so you can digest it. But we're trying to give you a synopsis as much as possible about how creation took place. It explains how Nibiru itself did not hit the planet, yeah, because it's too big. Mm. Um, but it was, at the time, the planet was bigger than what it is now. It was known as Tamat. And of course, the planet has gone through many, many different kind of like destructions, not all of it, but certain parts of it, and it's been reconstructed. This is where your Bible stories pick up off in Genesis when they're saying, let us, you know, they say God is saying, let there be light mm -hmm. and let there be this. That's Enki um, and, you know, the Anunnaki that are doing the work of terraforming the planet, you know, and um, there were beings in the waters and these, these beings are known as the Troglodytes. And this book goes into that whole story of the crash of Nibiru, which happened 24 billion years ago. Um, yeah, this book is amazing. Just scrolling through it to see what else we can share. Dog, Dogon tribe? Yep. Breaks down DNA. Um, how ne the extraterrestrial DNA tie into us. Neutralites as well. Yeah. The race of those species of beings. The dinosaurs, um, the Dogons, as you said, how they were able to map, you know, constellations of Sirius you know, A, B and C, um, way before they had telescopes to, you know, to be able to do that. Um, very but, fascinating book. Mm. Talks about the webs, how we are tied into the extraterrestrials. When you look at your hand, what people don't see is that if you look at, if we used to tie it like that together, you can still see the see, space yeah. there, still there. Mm. But imagine this came all the way here mm. and then you had your nails. Um, that would be you looking like a reptilian um, and we are part reptilian also goes into the ostrich people in um, zimbabwe south africa mm -hmm. that also mixed in with t certain types of extraterrestrial beings as well yeah it shows you how you evolve um you know in the womb of your mother through the you know the trimesters where you're a gray then you obviously, uh, you know, in, you're in the sack of water. Mm -hmm. You're living and breathing in water. Um, obviously, you've got the reptilian side when you're a tadpole. Um, and then the greys, when you've got the big head, and you're, you know, you've got the big eyes as a baby, you're more, you know, of a bigger head and a, a small tailed body than um, as you come out and then you start to even out. So, yeah, it takes you through the Ashtar command, um, yeah, there's so much to this book. Hitler's involvement. Yep, Hitler and how he was in contact with the Pleiadians and they gave him certain crafts. He shows you the crafts and the stealth, you know, the stealth um, bomber, which was quite ahead of its time. Um, you know, this is technology that was re received from extraterrestrials. Did we, so go much. did we go into the face of Mars? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we touched yeah. on the face of Mars. To, to, uh, Ma Ma Madame Blavatsky yeah. of the Thule Society, the witch that um, Zygrim that Hitler was in contact with and how he was able to go back in time and um, get information. And also people don't realize that Hitler never actually got killed. There was a clone of him mm. and that's the clone that they, they supposedly found. But he was able to go back in time. And um, we've spoken about the going back and forth in terms of time. Um, talks about the tablets of the Sumerian texts. There's so much information. And of course, it goes into the original um, Ethereans or the mm. what we call the Riskians, where um, Parna Babianun is from, the planet Risk, um, how you know they came here and seeded this planet. So yeah, we, we, we're going to start going through a number of books um, and no matter how much 
we talk about it, you have to read it for yourself. Um, and then you can ask questions and we can expound when we start the next series mm. of Ask Us Anything. 